Mm. All right. So this is what the question says. Consider the circuit shown below. Uh, find the voltages V1 and V2. So V1 and V2 and the resistance value R4. Okay, these are all quantities that I typically treat as known. Um, but all right, the question is kind of making us solve it backward or something. We can definitely do that. Now, this is a question where we have an overdefined system. So you have to be careful in how you write the uh, Kirchhoff's rules. So, um, you know, the advice that I usually give regarding the application of Kirchhoff's uh, loop rule, and sorry, I'm going in the wrong order, Kirchhoff's junction rule and the loop rule. So junction rule says sum of all the current into a junction is equal to sum of all the current out of the junction. The loop rule says if you, as you go around the loop, uh, add up all the changes in voltage, they add up to zero. And my usual advice is that I apply the junction rule first. And if you kind of just follow that blindly, you will either one, do a lot of unnecessary work. Well, you'll do a lot of unnecessary work. I think that's the biggest thing. So let me show you some of those unnecessary work you might be doing. and. I'll make sure that I don't do that. So this circuit is actually more complicated than what you would guess from these three unknowns. And that's your first hint that this must be an, an overdefined circuit, as in they gave you some values that they didn't have to give you. So this is how many junctions it has. It has one, two, three, four junctions. So, um, um, so if you are following my usual advice, what you should be doing is you have to make sure that you don't use one of the four junctions because the last junction is guaranteed to give you um, guaranteed to give you a dependent equation equation that's dependent on the first three you wrote down. So you would write down one, two three junction rule equations, and then you will look at, okay, how many unknowns do I have left? And then you do, uh, and then you do write down however many loop rules you need to write down in order to have a complete system of equations that has the exactly right number of equations. Now, I hope before you actually write down any of these junction rule equations, you realize that for some of these junctions, equation that you'll be writing down won't tell you anything that you don't already know because this junction equation will be written in terms of I2, I3, and I4, and I know them all. And I guess I'm happy to see that, you know, 3A is equal to 1A plus 2A is consistent with the equation I would have written down. But um, so this is where I'm beginning to see, oh, this is an overdefined system. I have to be careful about what equations I write down. Because basically if any equation is unnecessary in solving my system of equations, I don't want to write it down. My goal here is to write down the exact three <laughs> equations I need, no fewer, no more, <laughs> exact three that I need that'll help me solve for these three unknowns. V1, V2, and R4. So, um, so I'm going to just from the get-go decide not to use this junction because it's not gonna give me anything that's, um, that I don't already know. This is where the problem, you know, problem could have chosen not to give me I4, but it gave it to me, so I'll make use of that. And let's see here. Um, it looks like a junction number three is also um, useless <laughs> in that I'm going to be writing down an equation about I1, I3, and I5, which are all known. And I'm, again, happy to see that, you know, 4 is equal to 1 plus 3. So no values are specified in the circuit are in internally self-inconsistent. Uh, if it were, then it would be a typo in the textbook question and I'll be filing errata. Um, but I, I won't be using that junction. Junction number three doesn't give me anything. In fact, it looks like all the currents are actually specified. So, so I'm not actually using any of the junction rules because none of the junction rules here will give me any information that I didn't already know. 
So, so th that's a new thing. Um, so I'm going to be just relying strictly on the loop rule. Um, so apparently I'm writing down three loop rule equations. <laughs> um, so that might actually be a good thing because I think I'm basically, I remember when I was doing the modified version of this question, there were six unknowns and I was uh, writing down three junction rules and three loop rules. So it looks like I'm just uh, not writing the junction rule equations and just uh, writing the loop rule equations. And I think that's perfectly fine with me. So what I do have to do is I have to make sure that my loops include these, uh, com uh, these components whose parameters I'm trying to learn. So I have, um, I need to include a loop uh, involving the register R4, and I need to include the loops including the battery V2. So um, uh, here's one loop I can use, uh, just a, a loop that just captures both of these um, unknown elements. I can have a loop starting from here and going in this direction counterclockwise. And later on, I'll figure out all the voltage changes that I collect as I go around this loop. But that's a loop that will contain the battery V2 and register R4. And let me try to come up with a loop that includes the battery V1. I can have a loop that starts here and goes clockwise and comes back here eventually. So that's another loop that will include the battery V1. And in fact, since everything is known, um, every other parameter in this loop is known, I can probably get V1 based on single on that single equation just in a single step. Um, something makes me a little bit uh, on, so I have two equations, but I have three unknowns. So I definitely need one more equation. So let me define one more loop. Uh, I think I see where I'll face the problem. So uh, let me call this my equation one. So the equation one will almost stand on its own. And from that one equation, I can just solve for V1. And then I'll be done with that. And when I write down my equation two, the problem I will face is that I have one equation, just the equation two, and the two unknowns. So I won't be able to solve for any of them. So that's where I need another third equation. And here, the third equation, if I define my loop this way, starting from here, going clockwise, this third equation will happen to contain just V2. So I can solve for V2 in that third equation, um, plug it into my second equation, and get R4 that way. So, you know, let me actually do this one by hand. I, I don't think I'll be saving all that much time doing this on Sage. So um, I'll just do it by hand. Let me write down my equation. So I'll, I'll write down all the equations first, just as a matter of good problem solving habit. And then, um, and then just finish it up. So equation one, I'm going to start from here. And each time I go over each element, I'm going to collect my um, uh, my my voltage changes and for the um, sake of for the sake of simplicity I'm gonna just use the symbols I'm not going to actually use the numbers so uh, my voltage change as I go across the battery v1 in from the negative to positive terminal is plus v1 and as I go across the register r1 in the same direction as the current I drop amount of voltage by the amount I1 times R1. And as I go across register R3, same direction as current to I3, I drop another voltage, I3, R3. And then as I go across register R2, same direction as current R I2, I drop another voltage, I2, R2. And I'm back to my starting point. So these changes all should add up to zero. So I, I can see that I can just solve for V2 here, but let me finish that writing down the remainder of equations. Um, equation two, um, as I go across battery V2, I get a pl uh, I'm going from negative to positive terminal, so I get um, plus V2 as my voltage change. And as I go across R2 in the same direction as I2, 
I get voltage drop I2, R2. And I, as I go across R4, it looks like I'm going in the opposite direction as I6. So I get a voltage rise plus I6, R4. And then I'm back to the original starting point. So that adds up to zero. And this is the equation where I was anticipating that I would get two unknowns. So I need another equation. That's my equation three. Starting from this point here, as I go across V2, from the negative to positive terminal, I get voltage change plus V2. And I'm going against the current I3 as I go across R3. So it's going to be plus I3 R3. And as I go across register R5 in the same direction as current I5, it's going to be minus I5 R5. And that should add up to zero. I'm back to the starting point. And this is the equation where, okay, I only have V2 as the unknown. So I can solve for V2 here, plug that in equation two and solve it. So let me just quickly, so this is my system of equations that I'm solving for. And since these are unusually simple, let me do it by hand. So from equation one, this is what you get. Uh, just solving for V1, I, I guess I just move everything else over. I get V1 is equal to I1 plus R, not plus, um, I1 times R1 plus I3 R3 plus I2 R2. And I'll leave it up to you to plug in the numbers. You can do that. Um, so instead of doing equation two, I'm gonna do equation three and solve for V2 out of equation three. So from equation three, I can get that uh, moving everything else over. V2 is equal to um, I5 R5 minus I3 R3. I swap the order of these two so that uh, my first term doesn't start out with a negative. Um, and uh, how you do equation two, you really have two choices. You can either, you know, get a number here and plug in the number into equation two. You know, that would be fine enough. I, as much as I prefer to do things algebraically, I think at some point, um, you know, things don't simplify anyway. So, <laughs> but let me, let me just uh, first to solve this for R4. So solving equation two for R4, this is what I get. So from equation two, I get R4 is equal to moving everything over I2 R2 minus V2 over, um, I'm dividing out I6, I6. And if you are working with V2 in terms of numbers you wrote down, then great, you are done here, plugging the number here. Or you know if you want to carry out the actual algebra, then you do simply <laughs> write the same. So it's gonna be I2 R2 um, plus I3 R3 minus I5 R5. But this is what I mean, it doesn't really simplify anyway. So um, it, there isn't a great benefit from uh, working things out analytically, uh, unless uh, someone changes numbers on you, but this is the kind of question where you are not really allowed to change the current arbitrarily because those are constrained by the other three equations that we decided that we didn't have to write down this time. So yeah, so this is the another example of circuit analysis. And this is, I guess, an example where it helps for you to um, slow down and look and make sure that you don't write down equations that are unnecessary because yeah, this uh, is an overdefined system.